Today we're going to talk about how to analyze a graph and apply a linear model uh, to it. For a very uh, in-depth overview of this, I'm going to leave a link in the description below um, to a video that I've done a uh, basically analyze an almost identical problem. Okay, talked about a lot of limitations, kind of real-world applications of it, and um, uh, if you understand that, you will definitely understand this video. This one I'm going to run through a little quicker, uh, just save a little time and get to more videos for you. So, for the following exercise, use the graph in figure eight, to sh uh, which shows the profit Y in thousands of dollars of a company in a given year T which T represents the number of years since 1980. So supposedly the problem in the description below, this is now a positive function. Uh, in other words, it has a positive slope and the other one had a negative slope. So the first question is saying, uh, find the linear function Y where Y depends on T, the number of years since 1980. All this kind of means is just to find Y in terms of T. So you're gonna find Y meaning a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo da 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 with a T in it. Okay, and uh, it might have been in the last problem that I've I used X the whole time. Ah, oops, um, just you know X and T. It doesn't really make a difference. It doesn't you know they're just letters. So uh, what the the meaning behind them is what's important. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to now find the linear function. What defines a linear function is going to be two things. Let me just plug in the T right now so I don't forget. Uh, two things. Okay, two things define it: the slope and the y-intercept. I'm going to find them both quickly. Full detailed analysis in the problem in the link in the description below. So slope here is always known as change in y over change in x. I know then that, that means y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I notice here that this is really now two particular points or the coordinates of two points, twos and ones. So I go to my graph and I'm going to find two points. Any two points, but find points that kind of line up with maybe nice values. So the coordinates here of this point will be 15 comma 150, because that's the x and the y value. And maybe I'll choose this point. This point looks like it's gonna be x value of 25 and the y value is gonna be 450, okay? Call this your twos and call this your ones. So in other words, the slope here will now equal y2, which is the 450, I'm just following this formula now. So this is 450 minus then the 150, all then divided by 25 minus 15. Again, if I'm going a little fast, uh, I went through very nice paste in the prior problem. So here, this is gonna be 300 over 10. So here now we're gonna get our slope of being equal to 30. So that's now the slope, all right? So in terms of my linear model, I now have y is equal to m times time plus b. Instead of having m here, the slope, I'm going to now write 30, okay? So, so far I'm getting closer to my uh, linear model, I need to now find the y-intercept. That's the next step. All right, so let's erase all this stuff. All right, let's find now the y-intercept. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to now copy down my equation up here, and I have to realize uh, one thing. When I think about problem solving, I'm thinking about to myself, well, how do I find b? And the only way to do it mathematically is if I know t, which is an x, and I know y. And T or X and Y represent any single point along the line, right? So this point, for example, that has a coordinate of X comma Y. Instead of using X, we'll call it T, okay? So what I realize is that if I use this point, I know a T value, I know a Y value, I can plug them then on in to the formula. So Y is gonna be equal 150. This is now 30 times on the time of 15, okay? And then that's gonna be now plus B. Now, what this tells me is that I can now calculate B. I have one equation with one unknown. So when I do the math out now, this is 150, and that should be equal to now uh, 450, right? So plus B minus the 450 on both sides. And that looks like it's gonna be negative 300. So the y-intercept here uh, is negative 300, okay? So now I can go back up to my linear model. I can get rid of that b essentially, and now I can plug it in with, an unknown, uh, with a known. So it's gonna be minus 300, because it's a negative 300. So this now represents the linear equation, or the linear model. And hopefully that makes sense if you were to take this line and extend it all the way on down. I don't know if it's to scale or not, but you know, uh, I don't think it is to scale, but this would be roughly about negative uh, 300, okay? So let me just make sure I did the math there correctly. 
Yep, should be. Yep, yep, that's what it looks like it's working out to be. Okay, so, um, yeah, so that takes care of that, okay? So now, why don't we take a look at, uh, yeah, okay. So let's now do this. Let's take a look at the next question. Let's erase some of this work. Okay. Find and interpret the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, we basically, we know that the y-intercept is always the b value, right? We've seen that many, 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 many times now. So the y-intercept is equal to negative 300. Okay. So the y-intercept being negative 300, um, we, you know, we can interpret that now. So the y-intercept is when x is equal to zero, or in this case, time is equal to zero. So t is equal to zero. So I guess how we are to interpret this is to say at the start, you know, um, at 1980, at the year 1980, I guess the profit of this company, if the trend continued all the way backwards, and if we can apply the current trend to some time, some time period in the past, which we might or might not actually be able to do in reality, um, we can say that the profit of the firm here was negative 300. But remember, it's, um, the, yeah, so negative 300. Remember, though, this is in thousands of dollars, so it's really negative 300,000. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's what that means. Fine, interpret the x-intercept. Uh, so the x-intercept now is where y is equal to zero, right? So the x-intercept will be somewhere in this particular location, something like this. So remember that the y value there is equal to zero. So I can use my linear model again. So it's 30, 30 times time minus the 300. And uh, what I want to do then is, let me just check this. For some reason, this is just looking strange, but I'm going to plug in, I'm just going to plug in the 450 and the 25. I want to see how this works out, okay? Just give me two seconds. So this should be then 30 uh, times 25 minus the 300. Yeah, no, it's working out, okay. Um, so what I now need to do is plug in a value of zero for y because I know at that point the y value is zero and notice I can now solve for the t value at that point. So I add the 30, or excuse me, add the 300 on over to both sides. So we're gonna get 300 is equal to uh, 30 t. And we realize that t will be equal to roughly 10. And doesn't that look like about 10? Yes, it does, right? So my angle on this thing has to be downward a little more. And I think that would be then a little more to scale because it's still messing with my eyes. So I guess that, no, I mean, that looks pretty much in line. Yeah, whatever. Okay, it's not to scale. So here it's 10. Okay, that would be now the x-intercept. And what that means in terms of like interpreting this in a business context, um, this would represent the when the profit is zero, right? When the firm reached or achieved zero profit and you might say, well, what the heck? Why would we be celebrating that point? Um, we would only be celebrating that point if they started in the red, essentially if they were negative. At some point in time, this is known as the um, break-even point, okay? More, more or less, all right? So now they're finally becoming profitable after this point, and they were unprofitable before that point. Um, it's they're, they're breaking even, all right, at that point. So that's the significance. And the answer was 10, okay? Find and interpret the slope. So we kind of already talked about that slope is just gonna be change in Y over change in X. In this problem, it's going to be the change in the profit, right? Remember, the change in the profit is going to be in thousands of dollars per then a change in year per year. So uh, our slope here was 30. So basically that's $30,000 every single year, $30,000 every single year the profit is increasing, right? That's all it represents, all right? And that should kind of make sense. If they started at $300,000 in the red, every year they gained $30,000 in profit, then in 10 years they should have broken even or should break even. Guys, thank you so much for your patience and for viewing the video. I do hope this helped. Please remember to help us out if you can and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.